Wednesday, November 14th. I'm Riley Miller and I'm Chris Tatum. We've got a lot of news headlines we need to get to in just a moment. But first, how about that weather and those cooler temperatures? That's right. We're going to take a live look from our Skyview 22 camera at the Homewood Suites on the river. Meteorologist Jonathan Myers is standing by with your chilly Wednesday forecast. Mm. Hey, Jonathan, you're exactly right, Riley. And good morning, everyone. We're going to see much cooler temperatures today. We were close to 80 for some of us yesterday afternoon, and we're going to struggle to get out of the 50s for today. And you notice from downtown Savannah, just lots of low clouds out there. Not seeing any rain as we start things off this morning, but I do expect to see some showers out there as we go into the afternoon. 56 degrees to start out and temperatures will be holding steady throughout a good part of the day. Only upper 50s uh, later this afternoon. The only rain that we've really seen this morning, maybe a little patchy drizzle in parts of the low country, but we've been seeing a little light rain from Montgomery and also for Toombs County up into Candler County, seeing a little light rain from states where Sylvania also Hampton is seeing a little bit of light rain, even a patchy drizzle or two will be possible. But all this moisture down the Gulf of Mexico. Mexico will continue to stream our way as a cold front will be approaching by tonight. That will give us a really good chance for some rain. This will come tonight and into tomorrow morning. Probably the greatest chance of rain will come probably around sunrise tomorrow. That's why we have that highest chance of rain there on Thursday. But the good news is dry weather in the forecast for Friday and also for the weekend. I'll detail that for you in less than 10 minutes. Jonathan, thank you. 631 and new this morning. Savannah and Chatham County are about to get a new early learning center to help prepare children for first grade and give them a better chance at success. But it will mean big changes at some schools. WJCL Stephen Moody joins us live right now to tell us more about that center and about two meetings where parents can get their questions answered. Hey, Stephen. Good morning. We have to wait at least another year for the opening of that new early learning center, but parents tonight will have a chance to learn more about it at two meetings here at Andrea B. Williams Elementary School. Now these upcoming changes will affect students at East Broad K through eight, Andrea B. Williams and Schumann Elementary Schools and Hubert Middle School. East Broad will become the home of the early learning center and their grade configuration will change from K through eight to a pre-K school. Now the Savannah Chatham County School District is hosting two sessions. Parents of elementary school students will have their session at 6 p.m. and parents of middle school students will have their session at 7 p.m. Now parents will have a chance tonight to learn more about those changes. There will also be more information about pre-K screenings and other enrollment information. Reporting live here in Savannah, Stephen Moody, WJCL 22 News. All right, Stephen, thank you. School leaders say they also plan to serve dinner at those meetings and give students free health screenings. 632 and over to commitment 2018 news. The race for Georgia governor isn't over yet. Several Georgia counties have not certified their election results by the Tuesday deadline. The secretary of state's office says results in 16 out of 159 counties were not certified last night. This comes after a federal judge gave an order preventing the secretary of state from certifying all of Georgia's results until at least this Friday. It also directs state and local election leaders to conduct a review of many of the provisional ballots and explain exactly why some provisional ballots were rejected. Well, that order also asked the Secretary of State's office to create a website for people to check the status of their provisional ballot. And we understand this morning that site is now up and running. And there is a number for each county people can call to check their status. You can find all of that information, of course, on the Secretary of State's website. Well, Democrat Stacey Abrams campaign manager says there are enough uncounted votes to force a runoff. But people close to Republican Brian Kemp say the race is over. And he would still win even if all the provisional ballots were in her favor. Georgia has to certify all results by November 20th. Well, one local election race is heating up again as two candidates get ready for their runoff. We're talking, of course, about the Hilton Head Island mayoral race between Kim Likens and John McCann. They're about to go head to head to see which will become the new mayor. And they're stepping up their strategies to win. We have to do is find out what is it that those individuals um, that chose to vote for John or other candidates were really looking for and what's important to them so that I can understand and appreciate that and see how I can help carry that voice and that message forward. Before you had a lot more time, now you don't have a lot of time. When you look at the whole campaign, it was a marathon. When you get to the runoff, it becomes a race. Well, that runoff, by the way, is next Tuesday, November 20th. 634 and the death toll continues to rise after the California wildfires. About 50 people now dead. Hundreds of people are unaccounted for and thousands of others are waiting to get back home. Now, hundreds of National Guard troops are also helping find lost loved ones. 
And California firefighters are getting some celebrity support. Food Fighters frontman Dave Grohl served his black beet barbecue in Calabasas Monday night. He also posted an image to Instagram telling firefighters to dig in. Crews who have been battling the fire also posted to Instagram saying, thanks, Dave. It was excellent. Well, the Red Cross right now working to make sure a Ridgeland family has a happy Thanksgiving despite losing their house to a fire earlier this week. Now, that fire happened Monday on Sunset Avenue. Firefighters did help that family get out of that house safely. No word right now on how the fire started. Well, no doubt about it, hotels and restaurants pump big bucks into the low country economy. And today, the University of South Carolina Beaufort leaders will officially open a new hospitality management building. That's where students can better learn how to run those kind of businesses. That ribbon cuttings at 11 o'clock this morning. The new building, by the way, will feature more state of the art classrooms, a drink laboratory and even Riley, a professional kitchen. Exciting stuff. Well, it is 636 and the town of Hilton Head is working to protect the island's natives and other local citizens. Tonight, it's hosting a strategy building workshop on preserving the Gullah Geechee culture and you're invited. The discussion will revolve around property concerns and barriers to developing their land. Leaders also plan to brainstorm ideas on educating others about their culture, paying taxes and navigating codes and policies. They want to hear your strategies as they say preserving this culture is a top priority. The workshop is expected to last two and a half hours and those in attendance are asked to stay the entire time. It's happening at the Northridge event venue on William Hilton Parkway starting at 530 tonight. And if you're unable to make it but would still like to share your ideas, you can call the number right here on your screen. Well, we are right now just hours away from country music's biggest night, the CMA Awards. They take place, of course, in the heart of Nashville, and they air right here on WJCL ABC. Now, ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is in Nashville this morning with a preview from Music City. I'm Marcy Gonzalez in Nashville, where the final preps are underway for country music's biggest night. Of course, we are talking about the CMAs hosted for the 11th year by Brad Paisley and Carrie Underwood. It is going to be a night of huge performances. Florida Georgia Line says they will take the stage with BB Rexa for their huge crossover hit meant to be. They say it will be the most memorable performance of that song yet. And country music icon Garth Brooks will debut a new song for his wife, fellow country star Trisha Yearwood. He tells me when he was rehearsing on stage, he broke down crying. Uh, it's just such an emotional moment that we're expecting here tonight. Now, he is the reigning entertainer of the year, but this year he is not in the running. So Luke Bryan, who is opening the show, tells me he is ready to take that title back. Keith Urban is also up for that top honor 17 years after winning in that category. Also nominated Jason Aldean, Kenny Chesney and Chris Stapleton, who has the most nominations this year with five. And you can watch the CMAs here on ABC. And the 52nd annual CMA Awards start at 8 o'clock, and it's right here on WJCL ABC 22. It's 638 and across South Carolina, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in Columbia. The State House Christmas tree has arrived and is now ready to be decorated. This year's tree is a 35 foot white fir from Maryland. It will soon be covered with more than 13,000 lights and 900 ornaments. It will stay dark until the 52nd annual Governor's Carol Lighting, which takes place November 26th. Hmm. And Jonathan is starting to feel a little bit more like Christmas outside. Yeah, I want to sing along with those kids singing Jingle Bells. Uh, chilly you want to do it together? No. no. Chilly outside, <laughs> and uh, we're going to see this definitely feeling like the season. Thanksgiving is next week, and I definitely will feel a struggle to get out of the 50s uh, for today, and we're going to probably see temperatures upper 50s this afternoon to have that in the forecast. We'll see maybe a little bit of light rain as we go throughout the afternoon. A couple spots like Alma, Blackshear, and also Jessica it may touch 60, but I think Hinesville to a little West Sea will be in the upper 50s. 56 for Statesboro today, 58 for Polar, 61 for Tybee, and we'll see those mid to upper 50s from Hampton, Ridgeland, Bluffton, and also from Beaufort today. So definitely need that coat on, even maybe an umbrella later this afternoon. I'll detail this chilly forecast, but milder weather is on the way for the upcoming weekend. I'll detail that in three minutes. A week after celebrating victory, it's time to get to work. I'm Jared Hill in Washington with what's in store for this freshman group of lawmakers. 